The criminal trial for former police officer Derek Chauvin continued today, and this one was a nail biter. In the end, the prosecution and the defense rested their cases. The judge said to the jury, have a nice long weekend. Come Monday, we'll hear closing arguments, and then you will be sequestered as you enter deliberations. But the people of Minneapolis dodged a bullet. The state screwed up big time. You see, a month ago, evidence was presented to the state in advance. We're going to have expert testimony. This testimony was heard by the court yesterday, and it was particularly good for the defense. In this testimony, the expert witness, a medical expert, said that carbon monoxide may have played a role in George Floyd's death. The state did not admit evidence on time and asked the judge to be able to do so because they had they discovered new evidence this morning. The judge said, no. And if I even get a hint that you will bring up this evidence at the last minute without notifying defense, I will declare a mistrial. In a stunning turn of events, they did just that. I was shocked to watch this in real time. Even even analysts from CNN are saying, did the witness just say exactly what the judge said not to say? Oh, yeah. This is scary because we've seen the ongoing riots in Minnesota and it may have ended in a mistrial. Everybody was on the edge of their seats. Will the judge come back and say, you're done. Mistrial. It didn't happen. And the defense was clearly angered by this, at least in my opinion. And we'll go through exactly how this went down. I've even got analysts from some legal experts over at Legal Insurrection, their live analysis. But we got to talk about the bigger picture as well and what this means. There's a few other aspects of this trial that we saw today. Notably, Derek Chauvin pleaded the fifth. He will not testify. Of course, that's being used against him by the left, where they're claiming that he won't even speak about his own defense. You have a right to plead the fifth. You do. Because you don't want to incriminate yourself and you don't know sometimes exactly what you say could, you don't know what the cross-examination would be. That's why we have a Fifth Amendment right. The same is true for Maury's Lester Hall, the man identified as George Floyd's drug dealer who also pleaded the Fifth. The difference with that case was that his lawyer actually came out and said he doesn't want to incriminate himself in a third degree murder charge. That was a little explicit. But does it mean that Maurice Lester Halt is guilty of anything? When you plead the fifth, we leave it at that because we respect people's right. Just because you won't testify does not mean you are admitting guilt or in any way insinuating guilt. Although they do advise, uh, lawyers typically advise their clients, many people will take it that way. And Chauvin said, well, so be it. I wonder about these stories. You know, uh, Chauvin, now this officer, Kim Potter. There's another story about a man, I think it's in Florida where he shoved a young black man. It was filmed. And now it's national news and Black Lives Matter is protesting. Meanwhile, a 16 year old white teenager was shot and killed by cops and no one seems to care. We see this double standard in the media. We see it published. Project Veritas putting out this 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 new clip today where you've got a guy at CNN basically saying like, yeah, you know, it's all you know, it's it's, it's race baiting and they only care about certain races. You know, it's only only white people when there is a shooting. You see how the media plays the game. You see how it's, how it's exploited by the activists and you see how it results in a trial. Now, the bigger picture here, in my opinion, that freaks me out is that it seems to me, at least a clear cut case of the state defying the judge. The defense was furious. They, 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 the judge called a recess and we thought there could be a mistrial. Even leftists were saying this was a huge mistake on the part of the prosecution. It was a huge risk and they screwed up big time. Yet they get away with it. Maybe in the end, the judge was thinking, look, the case was particularly bad for the prosecution. So them screwing up in this capacity, it's not like they're probably going to win. But who knows? Many conservatives are saying the jury will likely be hung, not able to come to a decision, or there will be some kind of some kind of political response. As some have pointed out, some of these jurors have to commute through riots to make it to court. So how could it not be tainted? Let's go over what's happening here in this country and this potential mistrial and what it would have meant for the for the people of Minneapolis. This was a this was a scary moment. I'll tell you that. And it shows that I think the the court is actually a bit deferential to the prosecution, though the activists think the other is true. I mean, ultimately, I think the judge is doing a good job. But let's read this news before we get started. Head over to TimCast.com to become a member and get access to exclusive members-only segments of the Timcast IRL podcast. We had Jack Murphy and Seamus Coglin from Freedom Tunes on the show last night. It was a hoot. And we got a bonus segment up at TimCast.com. 
There's a real risk we get banned. Look, they're, they're deleting channels left and right. Some people think it'll never happen to me. My Facebook's already down. Go to TimCast.com, become a member, because in the event I do get banned or censored or suppressed, that's where you'll be able to find our content. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let's read the news. Judge warns of mistrial in Chauvin case if prosecution witness even hints at newly discovered evidence. Surprise, surprise, he did just that. Let's break down exactly what happened and exactly what they got away with. The Hill reports, the judge in the George Floyd case rejected a request by the prosecution on Thursday to enter newly discovered evidence in the murder trial of Derek Chauvin that would have contained information about Floyd's carbon monoxide content during his arrest. Warning of a mistrial if the results were mentioned by their rebuttal witness before the jury. Prosecutor Jerry Blackwell told Judge Peter Kale on Thursday morning that the state had just received blood gas evidence from the Hennepin County Medical Examiner, Andrew Baker, who performed Floyd's autopsy that contained readings for the carbon monoxide content in his blood on the day he was arrested. The evidence, Blackwell said, was discovered after a former chief medical examiner called by the defense as an expert witness speculated in court that Floyd could have been exposed to carbon monoxide poisoning when he was pressed to the ground under Chauvin's restraint near a squad car last May. Though the witness, David Fowler, said he had no knowledge of whether Floyd's blood had, had even been tested for carbon monoxide, he pointed to potential carbon monoxide poisoning from listing each of the factors he felt played a role in his death. Blackwell grilled Fowler, the defense's sole witness who took the stand on Wednesday, over the speculation during the cross-examination later that day. Quote, you agree as an expert witness that you shouldn't jump to conclusions. That is, you should reach fair conclusions based upon careful, considered analysis. Do you agree that you shouldn't come at this in a way that's biased? You agree with that, don't you? You shouldn't cherry pick facts. You shouldn't try to confuse the jury. During comments to Cahill on early Thursday, Blackwell said Baker had discovered results from tests conducted when Floyd's body was examined last year that had information related to his carbon monoxide content. Blackwell said the state had previously subpoenaed all the medical records, but it did not receive the records containing the evidence in question. Dr. Baker heard the testimony, had not himself ever re requested this, nor had the ER physician. They explained that when somebody is brought in and blood gases are taken, there's a panel of them that are taken. The ones that get generated and the records would be the ones the ER physicians actually request. Nobody requested carbon monoxide readings because they didn't see how that was relevant. Did Dr. Baker spontaneously call you to tell you there might be something deep within the computer records that was not disclosed? Cahill asked. We did not seek him out asking anything. He had heard the testimony and thought that this record might exist because he was aware there's a panel of the tests that are run by the machine. Let me jump to, jump to the, the point on this. The judge ultimately said the defense provided you with the, the report from their witness in February, almost two months ago. And the defense did not find it relevant to seek out this information and were not able to produce it. It is not fair to the defense that the state would be able to bring up new evidence undermining their case without time to prepare. The defense was obviously upset by this. They challenged it. The judge said you cannot admit this evidence. But the state argued that we had previous testimony about the oxygen level in George Floyd's blood. You should be able to have an inverse you know, correlation without the test results because of the blood oxygen level. So the judge said, if you bring, I will allow you to rebut with your witness, Tobin. But if I even get a hint of you mentioning the test results, I will declare a mistrial. Surprise, surprise, they did it. I mean, I was sitting here with my jaw open, just like, what is happening? Pundits on the left and the right were shocked. Is, are they really doing this? Yeah. Check this out. From Legal Insurrection, Tobin, carboxyhemoglobin is when CO2 combines with hemoglobin. Why is that important? Important because when the CO binds to the hemoglobin, it displaces oxygen off the hemoglobin. Need the O on the hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, hemoglobin does, don't want the carbon, carbon dioxide. Have an opinion as to whether the statement that Floyd's carboxy could have increased to 18% is reliable. No, not reliable. Based on arterial blood gas obtained when Floyd in Hennepin County, Cahill, sidebar, did Tobin just stray into mistrial territory? This was the live analysis from legal insurrection when it went down. I was shocked. It seems like the state didn't care. They asked this, this, the other witness, their witness, Tobin, to rebut 
the medical expert from the defense yesterday. And he even said there was a test done, which wasn't admitted to evidence. He even shows like the rest and explains like how they get the blood oxygen and then says, here's what they found and was asked, what was Floyd's carbon monoxide level based on that analysis? And he's like, probably not very high. And then the defense objected. The judge sustained, said, change your wording. Afterwards, there was a, a, a recess called where apparently, check this out, AFB says, stupid of the state to take this risk. Cahill, objection sustained, rephrased the question. Blackwell, why results not reliable? Understand something about oxygen saturation testing of the blood. Tobin, Floyd went to HCMC, uh, Hennepin County Medical Center. He had artel- arterial blood taken. And then on the blood gas measurements, pressure of oxygen, CO, the acid in the blood, pH, get all different measurements. Also get the O saturation. How much of the hemoglobin that carries the O, how much of that is saturated with O? And Floyd was 98%. Blackwell, 98% saturation with oxygen. Basically, many people were saying that this essentially strayed into Mr. Al territory. Blackwell said that's all prosecution done. Nelson asks for a couple of minutes steps away. Tobin remains on stand. Appears that Nelson has gone into chambers with Cahill and now coming back out. Legal Insurrection says irony. In a trial with huge racial overtones, Skynet has someone named Mark White as commentator. Nelson still on headphones used with sidebar. Cahill is telling jury a recess until 1045 or uh, so 10 minutes. Certainly Nelson must be arguing for a mistrial. He has no uh, practicable means to effectively cross-examine these new claims of Tobin. Defense expert is on a plane flying home. Check this out. From Asha Rangappa. She is former FBI special agent lawyer, a CNN analyst, and she tweeted, did Dr. Tobin just mention the, the test the judge explicitly warned the prosecution not to mention on penalty of mistrial? That she did. Dr. Atanu Mokiri responded on Twitter, let's be honest to ourselves. The judge from the very beginning of the trial has has been sided with the defense. That to me is absolutely incredible to state. The state was able to admit last minute evidence without the defense being able to cross without their own witness because he left. The judge allowed it, didn't declare a mistrial. (sighs) Dodging a bullet there, guys. If they declared a mistrial, it could have gotten really bad. But uh, the judge didn't. Some asked, Isn't the, aren't things going well for the defense? They are. The state screwed up by not, re, not preparing a defense in this case. I mean, this was a major screw up, and that's why the state took the risk. They were willing to risk their entire case. Why? It's a freebie. It's a do-over. Mistrials are not necessarily good things for the defense. The state has flubbed and failed. They couldn't get their story straight. They can't even explain how George Floyd died definitively. A mistrial would have given them time to basically start over. However, it would have created a a case for appeal for Derek Chauvin. In the end, we all dodged a bullet. Now, here's here's the rest of the news. Okay, the the defense and the prosecution have rested. Closing arguments will be on Monday. And the riots will be over the weekend, so I'm sure the jury will be tainted to an absurd degree. Derek Chauvin trial, former Minneapolis officer accused of killing uh, George Floyd, declines to testify. It's basically that simple. He pleaded the fifth. They say former officer Derek Chauvin invoked his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination on Thursday and declined to testify as he faces murder and manslaughter charges in the death of George Floyd. The defense rested its case on Thursday. And in this moment, The defense asked Chauvin a series of questions to the court. You understand you have a right to testify, but you also have a right to plead the fifth. The judge said the judge asked Chauvin, were you coerced in any way or bribed or anything like that? And he said, no, I wasn't. He chose not to plead the fifth. What do you think the response was from the left in this country? Predictable. First of all, it's amazing to me that they can recognize the prosecution almost got a mistrial called. I mean, that's CNN analysis analysis. She's anti-Trump. She's left. We have this from Lawrence O'Donnell. He says, Derek Chauvin has nothing to say in his defense, not one word. And that means nothing. I'm sure he has many things to say in his defense, but he doesn't want to incriminate himself in areas he's not prepared for. This is a constitutional right. Why undermine that? Of course, they only care about power. This person responded on Twitter saying, by invoking the fifth, he's basically saying his defense will incriminate himself. No, he isn't. That is not to be inferred by the jury. We don't know the real reasons. People have a right not to testify. That's it. 
That's it. There's a difference here between Maurice Lester Hall and George Floyd. Previously, we heard that Maurice Lester Hall, the friend of George Floyd, would not be testifying and would plead the fifth himself. MEAWW reports Maurice Lester Hall allowed to plead the fifth. George Floyd pal will not have to testify. When we first got this news, I said it is not an indication of guilt. However, it may create reasonable doubt with the jury. When George, uh, when Derek Chauvin pleads the fifth, it's not going to add to definitive proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Creating doubt is easy. Proving beyond a reasonable doubt is hard. So there's a, there's a difference here. I respect Maury's Lester Hall, Maury's Lester Hall's right to plead the fifth. However, his lawyer also came out and said he fears being charged with third degree murder in the death of George Floyd. While it doesn't incriminate him, it does create reasonable doubt as to the true cause of death for George Floyd. I want to make sure that's clear. But I got to say, based on everything we've seen, it's like the left, uh, they don't care for constitutional rights in this country. It's that simple. What really separates the, the left and the right, whatever you want to call it, is, uh, I guess, in certain circumstances, just tribalism. There's probably not one easily defined way to split uh, the two factions. But there seems to be an overlap between those who respect civil liberties and civil rights and those who don't. Now, the defense has rested in the Chauvin murder trial. Chauvin's defense attorney, Eric Nelson, decided to rest his case after the former officer pleaded the fifth. This we understand. Now, what are the greater ramifications for Minneapolis? We are now going to sit back and wait to see what happens. This weekend will likely be very, very bad. And uh, I'm quite worried about it, to be completely honest. We have, uh, let, let, me, let me show you the story from the New York Times. We have already boarded businesses in Minneapolis brace for protests like the ones last year. How dare you, New York Times, brace for protests? Boarding up their windows for protests? Amazing. Well, my advice to the people of Minneapolis, y'all better buy supplies, board up your windows and doors, and make sure you are safe because you are about to witness destruction, mayhem, fire, death due to mass peaceful protests. Now, does that make sense? That's the story. The New York Times says Carl Mitchell spent Sunday nailing wood to the windows of the Amstar convenience shop he manages in North Minneapolis. Hours earlier, Dante Wright, a 20 year old black man, had been shot by the police 10 miles north. With the trial of the former officer Chauvin heading into its third week, Mr. Mitchell didn't want to take any chances. Mitchell, 26, saw last year just how quickly protests can escalate when the O'Reilly's auto parts across the street from his shop burned down at 4 a.m. From protests? Amazing. After a night of protests, they actually say it following Floyd's death. We weren't ready last time, he said, as customers paid for gas on Wednesday. We have already boarded. We pray not much else we can do. You can leave. I know it's not easy, but you can leave. As Minneapolis and its suburbs prepare for a verdict in Mr. Chauvin's trial, business owners are hoping they won't have to relive the weeks of protests from last year that sparked a nationwide discussion about where... <laughs> A nationwide discussion. You mean nationwide riots at home. It led to damage estimated about $300 million. Businesses already hurting from the pandemic closed. In downtown Minneapolis, near the site of Mr. Chauvin's trial, construction workers were putting up more fencing and boarding and widening the security perimeter around the courthouse where Mr. Chauvin is on trial. Public areas with park benches are now closed off by metal grates, fencing, and jersey barriers. One worker called the area a ghost town. A caribou coffee had so much wood up that regular customers thought it was closed until workers spray painted open on the sheets. Curfews have been in place in much of the metropolitan area since Sunday, with protests mostly occurring in Brooklyn Center, where Mr. Wright was shot. In the main drag of businesses there, only two gas stations were open late Tuesday. Every other shop was boarded and closed. Back in North Minneapolis, groups of National Guard troops could be seen patrolling late Tuesday night and during the day on Wednesday. Of the dozens of stores in strip malls, most had wood nailed to their windows. Some stores never reopened after last summer's protests, Mr. Mitchell said. And I'll tell you, some of them never will. And that's sad. Some won't reopen for decades. Mr. Mitchell, a black father of two, said he wasn't worried about his own safety. But now, in addition to his shop, his mind was on Brooklyn Center after neighboring areas, including Brooklyn Park, where he lives. And now I need to worry about what's going on at home. 
And that's what we can expect. No matter what happens, we'll see riots. The riots are going to happen this weekend. They're, they're, the activists have stormed the city. They're preparing for war. I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I would say figuratively, but to a low scale degree, they are. And it's going to get bad. The jurors will have to witness this over the weekend. And then come Monday, there is going to be that glimmer in the eye of the prosecution. If you acquit this man in any capacity, this city will burn and they will come for you. And the jurors know it. They've already expressed those fears. Some of them have. One juror actually lives in Brooklyn Center, apparently. These people have to commute through the riots to get to the courthouse. It's incredible. I don't see how showing it's a fair trial in this regard. But I also don't see how any court in any capacity could convict on second degree murder charges. Come Monday, we will hear closing arguments. And I cannot fathom any argument from the state based on their own evidence how Chauvin is guilty of murder in the second degree. That would imply that Chauvin saw Floyd and decided he was going to kill that man. We've already had the state's own experts testify. Chauvin opted for lesser force than he was permitted to use. You would imagine if he was intending to kill someone, he would have used more force than he was intending to use, which is a major component of what the state needed to prove in the first place and was unable to. That Chauvin's use of force was excessive. According to their own witness, it was not. So here we go, baby. I hope you're ready for low grade war. You know, I don't want to say literal war and I don't, I don't want to say it's just figurative. I mean, it mostly is figurative, but these people are coming out with very serious intentions. Someone shot up a police department in, I believe it was in Brooklyn Park. They shot through the front windows. There were gunshots ringing out in much of this uh, video footage. It's bad. People are trying to kill each other or I don't know what they're trying to do, but they're nearly killing each other. They're burning down the city. Some of these people just want to steal stuff. And that's true. And this is an opportunity for them to do it, and they will likely take it. Many of these officers don't seem to care what's happening all around them and just stand by and say this is fine when they probably should get out along with everyone else. The sane, regular people who are sitting by and watching this and doing nothing. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't argue on your behalf anymore. At a certain point, you have to take responsibility. Many of these people are sitting in a burning building deciding to stay. That's your choice. If your house is on fire and you decide to stay in it, what do, you, what do you want me to say? And then people think about it this way. Your house is on fire and you're thinking to yourself, but it's cold outside. But I won't have clothes outside. But I don't have a computer outside. But my job is not outside. OK, well, then stay in the house until it burns down and then you risk your family's safety or run outside, lose everything, but accept that your city is being burnt down and these people vote for more of it. The media in this country is corrupt. They're going to exacerbate all of this and they're doing it right now. I want to show you this story. Check this out from WIS News. Soldier charged in viral video surfaces uh, of confrontation with black man outside his SC home. So it wasn't Florida. It's uh, uh, Columbia, South Carolina. They say a viral video showing a white man in Richard County, South Carolina, confronting a black man who was walking on the sidewalk outside his home has led to an arrest. The video is being investigated by police, Fort Jackson military officials and the Department of Justice and has drawn protesters to the neighborhood. Richard, Richland County Sheriff Leon Lott addressed the public Wednesday evening about the incident. Let me just tell you what the incident is. This man right here, Jonathan Pentland, got in the face of a young black man and shoved him and then told him to get out of his neighborhood. He should not have done that. That was stupid. But I don't see why this is national news and I don't see why it's attracting Black Lives Matter protests. It's the story of a black man who was in a closed neighborhood he claimed he lived in. He says he lived in. He I'd imagine he probably does. And this guy got into a scuffle with him. We don't know why. The guy just did. He said, get out of here. As far as I can tell, maybe he thought the guy didn't live in that community. It was a closed community. And he was like, don't come around here. I don't, I don't know you. I don't want you around my house. He should not have gotten the guy's face. He shouldn't have shoved him. But more importantly, this is not news. I get into arguments with my neighbors from time to time. It happens. So what? Why is this major news? Because the media wants race baiting. Because the media knows this is the kind of thing that gets them traffic. I'll read for you his charges and the seriousness of this. Before I do, I'll show you this first. BLM protesters rally outside South Carolina home of Army drill sergeant who was arrested for shoving a black guy for being in his gated community and telling him you came to the wrong neighborhood. OK, Maryland trooper shoots and kills teenager who had airsoft gun. Which one generates protests? I think you get it. 
In Maryland, the teenager was white. The media still writes about the story. They still mention the race. But the race baiters and the grifters of the far left can't make money off it. So what do they do? They don't care. They ignore it. So what? Some leftists, the anti-woke left, are pointing out police killing people is wrong, and they're still hiding that, highlighting that story. And good. My respect to them. Be consistent. The Black Lives Matter groups don't seem to care. The sheriff confirmed Jonathan Pentland has been arrested and charged with third degree assault and battery. The charge carries a maximum penalty of a $500 fine and 30 days in jail. Why is it news that a guy shoved a guy? Why do I have to talk about it? Because it's clear what's happening. The media's game is to make us hate each other. This story goes far and wide because the activist game is to make sure we hate each other. Civil rights, civil rights movement, they're contentious times, but it was the right thing to do. And we don't want to hate each other. We want to come together and live together and compromise. But that's bad for the professional activists. They need a cause. And when they have a prominent cause, they can't let it go. Reminds me of my time working for nonprofits. We long said the goal of a nonprofit should be to put itself out of business. They're trying to accomplish a goal. Not every single one can. I mean, if it's your nonprofit focus on f- helping the homeless, there will always be homeless. But when it comes to major causes, environmentalism, climate change, the goal is to end. When it comes to those who are trying to accomplish something, say like getting President Trump out of office, the goal is to end. Take a look at the Lincoln Project, though. I mean, they've fallen apart for sure. But after Donald Trump got voted out, they said, we're now going to start targeting Republicans in the Senate. Why? You are Republicans. Because it was a grift. Because they're they're not serious people. Because they're just trying to take your money from you. There it is. The rest of us suffer for it. They go on to say the sheriff said his department worked swiftly to bring this case to a conclusion. His lead investigator slept in his office Tuesday night to make sure the investigation had a fast resolution. As the viral video begins, Pentland, who was a U.S. Army soldier based at Fort Jackson, asks the young black man what he's doing there, to which the young man replies he's out for a walk. It then shows the soldier saying you're in the wrong neighborhood before swearing at the young man and telling him to get out. The young man says he lives there. Video shows Pentland shoving the young man and threatening to get more physical with him. Don't do this. If someone's walking past your home, you don't recognize them. Mind your own business. This guy made a mistake. I don't care, though. It's not news. Why is it being highlighted? Because they want to make money, because they want you to be angry. And the more this kind of news gets play and the more this becomes the national story instead of, I don't know, Minneapolis riots, the worse it'll get. I tried searching for Minneapolis riots in this sto- for this story pulling up sources and reading analysis from the left and the right to figure out what they think about them. Of course, when you search for Minneapolis riots, you actually get stories about how the media is refusing to call it a riot from Fox News and some other conservatives because stories don't come up. Instead, you want to search for peaceful protest. And this is what you'll get from Slate. Why this keeps happening in Minneapolis on the ground after another black man is killed by police. The narrative is always how it's not their fault. It's the fault of the police. They never take responsibility, which brings me to my main point in all of this. How is it possible that a group of people is 100 percent wrong all of the time? Makes no sense, right? I mean, look, I can tell you the things I like about Joe Biden that he's done well, or I can defend Joe Biden in certain circumstances. The migrant centers on the border where kids are being held are not wrong. Some of them are awful and we should solve for these problems, but I don't blame Joe Biden for having to detain children who keep coming here. I do blame him for his rhetoric, which creates the pull factor. The point is, AOC has been right sometimes. Joe Biden has been right sometimes. I'm willing to admit that. The left is not. They say Trump is always bad no matter what he does. They constantly highlight these stories about the things that Trump has done. And they constantly highlight stories saying, look at this instance of racism, when in reality, It's just a neighborhood scuffle, but it's money for them. And when all these stories pile up, you get grains of sand making a heap. The more stories that emerge, the more the narrative becomes racism in America, institutional oppression, systemic violence, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I certainly think racism is a problem. I think we need police accountability and police reform. What do we get instead? No matter what happens, it's always the worst possible scenario. Even if Chauvin was doing his job and the story was more complicated than we realized, they won't let it go. You'll see a video of a man pushing another man and they'll say it's racist 
Or I don't know, maybe the guy just didn't like the kid. That's it. When you see someone get into a fight, do you really care all that much? Probably not. But if the media can make money off it, this is what you will get. And in the end, we're all worse off for it. I think this weekend will be bad for this reason. I think the jury will be tainted. And I think Chauvin is in trouble for that. But I also think they can't possibly convict him on second degree murder. That would be insane. And for that, we will see much more chaos. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 8 p.m. tonight at youtube.com slash Timcast IRL. Come hang out. We'll take your super chats live in real time. And uh, thanks for hanging out here. And we'll see you all then.